Hi, this is Robin Bremer, the author of the Kingdom Living series, the Kingdom Living study guides, Bible study guides, and the pocket guides. And today I want to share with you how to study the Bible. And one of my favorite tools is the Blue Letter Bible right here. And that is an awesome tool because you can study things by subject, which I love to study it by subject. In fact, that's pretty much the only way I can study. If I start studying, uh, uh, for example, the book of Matthew, I'll get stuck on a sentence somewhere and, and that'll take me to a subject and I'll go in rabbit trails and go all over the place. So it's easiest for me to study by subject. And so the word I picked today is tempted. And so what you do is, this is called the blue letter Bible dot org and it's an awesome website and it's my favorite. I use it all the time. And what you do is you come over here. Uh, let's see, somewhere up here, you right there, you would type in the word or the verse, and I typed it in tempted. So it took me to all the Bible verses that use the word tempted. Okay, so let's pick one, and then I'll show you how to use some of the other tools. And they tempted God. Um, let's go into the New Testament. Okay. Um, Okay, here, this is James 1.13. See, it tempted. Okay, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted when with evil, neither he tempts any man. So a lot of people say, God um, made me sick, gave me cancer, caused my kid to get in an accident because he was tempting me. He was seeing if I really believed he healed me or trusted him, or uh, he gave me this trial temptation because he, he uh, is testing me because... He doesn't know if I'll be faithful to do this or faithful to do that. So he's tempting me, testing me, or putting me through trials to strengthen me or build character in me. So let's go right here to tempt it. Well, first you go to the verse, James 1, uh, 13. Okay, then 1, 13 is right here. James 1, 13, right there. So you would go to Tools. And they just changed this recently, so it's a little bit harder to do. It's not as easy as it was. Okay, then this opens up uh, the original meanings of the word in the original language. Okay, so when he is tempted, that is a concordance number, and then it's 3985, and it would tell you more about that. But I want to go down here and see this tempted. This is whatever that word is. They'll also say that word. So you go here. And it will give you the Greek meaning in the entry. This is uh, the reference. Okay, what it means is to try whether a thing can be done, to attempt, to endeavor, to try and make trial of, test for the purpose of ascertaining his quality or what he thinks or how he will be behave himself in a good sense and in a bad sense to test one's maliciousnessly crafted, maliciously <laughs> crafted to put the proof of his feelings or judgment uh, to test one's faith, virtual character, enticed to sin, enticed to sin, right there's a clue right there, who's doing the tempting, uh, of the devil, temptation of the devil to solicit to sin, of inflicting evil, okay, here it says of Old Testament usage, now we're not going to go into that because that calls for a different kind of explanation that I'm trying to show you, okay, so let's view Vine's expository, expository, whatever that word is, uh, view their entry. They say it is to tempt, to try, to render, to examine, to prove, to test, and to try. And this is a Strong's number. To prove, to try, either in the sense of attempting or testing, to render, to prove. Temptation to test in a good sense. And then it goes and explains all that and it gives you some scripture references. <coughs> But what you can see is, you can see by looking at that, that God doesn't tempt you to sin. God doesn't want you to sin, so he's not going to put something in front of your face to tempt you to sin. And God's not stupid, so he doesn't need to test you to see what you're going to do, how you're going to respond. Because God knows all things, so there's no reason for him to tempt you. And if you go into the sower sows the word, what the sower sowing the word will do, let's go back here. And... 
what the sower sowing the word does is it shows you that people lost the word and the seed of the word and no, they had no harvest because they were focused on things of the world uh, pursuing riches instead of the, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God is not um, trying to do more for God the kingdom of God is God's government inside you and that is to enforce the defeat of the enemy to cause everything to come in line with God's word so you can take here and you could let's say you want to look up uh, a specific let's say a specific scripture you can look up like John John 10 let's just say John 10 we'll put it right in there and you can change here you can change what uh, version it is what Bible version I like New King James the best because I think that's the most accurate one but I do like to use Amplified once in a while so it's going it's supposed to go to John 10 let's, let's give that another thing there it might not see John's 10 that might be just a free set okay there we go John 10 okay and so it goes over John 10 and then again one of the tools you might want to pick up is interlinear linear I need to say these words uh, cross references commentaries I never read the commentaries because that's someone's opinion and I much rather have the Word of God than someone's opinion interlinear uh, shows you different translations of the same scripture so let's pick that one there and see if it's going to go to it. It might take a second because I have a little bit slow connection right now. But anyway, you can see it um, It will do more than one verse at a time, uh, different interpretations. It will give you the original meaning and uh, commentaries and then you can also use the dictionary and you can see here uh, different dictionaries, encyclopedias and if I go down here you can see more of what it has to offer so it's it's a really awesome tool what I do is uh, you can also copy and paste I just go like this and I right click and I copy that and then I paste it to my clipboard that's how I've written all seven of my books so far more books a lot more books to come but I copy it and paste it and that's that's how I copy uh, my stuff for my books but that's just an easy way to use this tool uh, to study the Bible. There's other tools out there. I really haven't found too many. This is just my favorite because I've been using it for so many years. And it's, it's so easy to use. Uh, you can also listen to the Bible in uh, oh. New King James, King James, and so on. You can listen to it. Um, see this copy options I should probably learn how to use that see this is new this has just happened in the last couple months they've just changed the look of it so I hope that helps you and how to use a concordance and tools to study the Bible and I also hope that my little teaching thing about God does not use tests trials and temptations to teach you to humble you to get glory or uh, to build character the devil uses tests, trials, and temptations just like he did Jesus on the cross in order to make you doubt the integrity of God's word, in order to make you believe your physical senses over faith, because without faith it's impossible to please God. So therefore, the devil is the one that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy God's character and your belief in it and your trust in it. He wants you to trust in your own behavior rather than... Uh, have faith in Jesus it's all about faith so the devil wants to take away your faith and your belief in God and put it into yourself and what you see in the physical realm so don't whenever whenever situations and circumstances happen to you don't think that it's God is allowing it to happen because you are to be led by peace and you're to be led by the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit the kingdom of God is righteousness peace and joy so if you're not led by the Holy Spirit, you're not going to have peace. So first of all, be led by the Holy Spirit in your circumstances. If a door closes, don't think God closed it because that circumstances. Kick down the door and go and do what God told you to do. So have a blessed day. Oh, and remember, robinbremer.net is my website. I broadcast live 7 o'clock p.m. Central every Monday night. I'll be teaching from my Bible study back there. I have all three of them. Um, this time it'll be about walking in the power of joy 
and why God is not a guy, God of poverty, lack, fear, depression, sickness, or disease, but he's a God of overflow, abundance, more than enough, um, supernatural abundance, and he wants you to walk in every day experiencing his supernatural abundance. So check out my website, check out, uh, put me in your Google circle so that I can share with you, and when you come to my live podcast starting on Monday, every Monday until the new year, and then I'll probably be doing a live broadcast at least once or twice a week after that, uh, probably once a week on a, on a Thursday, 7 o'clock on a controversial subject, and then uh, the regular Bible study on Monday. So come and join us, ask questions. Um, on the side, I'm going to have answers and questions. I really need you to ask questions because that kind of motivates me and gets me thinking and doing research. So check out my website, uh, subscribe to me on Facebook, YouTube, um, Twitter, Pinterest, and on Google Circles. And you have a blessed day. I'll talk to you tomorrow.